but the most important rule, the rule you can never forget no matter how much he cries, no matter how much he begs, never feed him after midnight. Here's your look at the new NECA Toys Gremlins Ultimate Gremlin. A gadget salesman is looking for a special gift for his son and finds one in a store in Chinatown. The shopkeeper is reluctant to part with the Mogwai but sells it to him with the warning to never expose it to bright light, water, or to feed it after midnight. All of this happens and the result is a gang of gremlins that decide to tear up the town on Christmas Eve. Before we have a look at the figure and we look at the accessories that come included with the figure, we're going to first figure out how tall the ultimate gremlin is. So I'm going to take the tape measure and put it right to the very top of its head, stopping it right there. It seems to be exactly six inches in height. Went for a dramatic pause there. Centimeters, you're looking at 15.3 centimeters tall. For some scale comparisons, there is the ultimate gremlin compared to the Ultimate Gizmo. I decided to bring out Ultimate Gizmo, though I still feel it's a slightly disappointing figure for the fact that its eyes don't sit far enough forward. It always kind of feels like the eyes are too pushed back. But I did want to do a comparison between Ultimate and Ultimate. Um, I guess a better comparison would have been to use one of the previously looked at Gizmos that wasn't part of the Ultimate line, the one that didn't have the removable faceplates. But again, I wanted to do uh, Ultimate to Ultimate. Accurately scaled, I suppose. If anything could be said, the Gremlin could have been a hair taller, because I think it is a little bit taller in the film. Um, I'm getting that itch. No, I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go get it looked at. But I'm getting that itch that I want to go back and have a look at some of my Gremlins, previous Gremlin figures in my collection. I have gotten some comments from you, the viewers. Thank you for that, by the way. I always like reading your comments. A lot of people would like to see me go back and re-review some of those old Gremlins figures. Let me know if you guys would be on board that. We're not, of course, going to put a shadow over top of this really exquisite new Ultimate uh, Gremlin. But let me know if you guys would be interested in the meantime. But in the meantime, there's the comparison of one Ultimate to the other. The Ultimate Gremlin with the Ultimate Mogwai Gizmo. Okay, so let's have a look at all the accessories that come included with the Ultimate Gremlin. And as with previous looks at Ultimate figures from NECA Toys, NECA never disappoints when it comes to the level of accessories. They sort of really think encompassing anything, any possibility, any scenario that you would want to put in play for how you want to display the figure. They put often film nods and they really put like enough things in there. Like for example, with the Gremlin here, they put enough accessories for all the different things you could do with them that you could buy multiples of these. The idea, as I wave my hands in front of the camera, the idea has popped into my head more than once. And as I continue to review this, the thought continues to process in the back of my mind that I want to pick up a couple of these, at the very least, maybe one or two more. And then I want to have them in their various different looks. Well, let's talk a little bit about their various looks. Let's start with the smallest item, because I'm sure that is the first thing that will get lost if I'm not too careful. That is a partially already, I suppose, lit cigarette. You can see it's a very nice little small trinket that you can display with the figure. I'll show you how that works in a second. Some of the ashes have already started to develop on the end. Just simply, there's no accompanying ashtray in which that could be tapped into. But I really don't think the gremlins are concerned all that much with where ashes are gonna settle popcorn wrappers, soda cups, anything that is currently coming included with this figure. So a nice little side accessory. It's not the easiest. I wouldn't even entertain the idea of trying to put it into his hand. The fingers are just not, as you can see, they're just not close enough. I mean, one remedy to that, if this, if cigarette is the way you want to sport with the figure, is that you could heat the hand simply submerge it into hot water just to soften the fingers. Put the 
cigarettes in between the fingers and then just kind of squeeze them shut, kind of squeeze it around it. Let it cool and it should be the proper, the proper width to support, properly support the cigarette. You could also lean it, but that's, that's asking trouble. That's going to fall out of its fingers onto the floor, never going to find it again. One thing you could also do too is put it in between its mouth, in between its lips. Let me just move the arm out of the way here. Move it in between the, put it in between the lips and you can close the mouth around it. There's one idea. There's a possibility for how you want to display the figure. Looks pretty good. It does look pretty good, doesn't it? Oh, NECA, you guys are the best. You can take the cigarette out of his mouth very quickly, carefully putting it to the side so I don't accidentally drop it. Let's have a look at some of the other accessories that come included with them. Well, for starters, another, well, not for starters, second accessory we can look at is the vintage 80s 3D glasses. One side is tinted red, one side is tinted blue. This is the way that we used to watch 3D films back in the 80s, although I was too young in the early, early 80s to enjoy 3D movies. I don't even think I saw a 3D movie when I was younger, but it rests very easily, actually. I mean, it doesn't even use the, the backs of the little supports for the glasses. In fact, it actually does most of it just by sitting just on its lip and it stays very nice in place. It also helps too that the glasses slightly have to friction fit over top of the eyebrows right here on either side. The eyebrows rub against the interior. Don't worry, they're not going to cause damage to the glasses, but it's just enough that the glasses don't, don't go anywhere. I like that. And again, you can have the mouth open, you can have the mouth closed. There's a couple of different variation, different ways that you can display it. So there's glasses. Now, if you are wondering though, I'll put this guy down once again, the glasses are made of cardboard, just a regular cardboard. The cardboard does have a slick surface to it, but it's still cardboard nonetheless. And then they've got the little overlays of plastic on the interior. So we put that also to the side. Another thing it comes included with is a pint of beer. You can see that the head is on the top. This is the head of the beer there, right there. <sighs> uh, it's nice that they've done like a translucent plastic on the interior that it does look like an, uh, an actual uh, alcoholic beverage. So I like that. You can put that into its hands relatively easy. But again, it's sort of a case where you're, you're resting it onto the fingers. The hands really aren't grabbing them as much as you're sort of just resting it against the fingers. Same thing also for this side as well. When you are putting it into its hand, you're sort of, again, just resting it. That's the operable word, you're resting it. Or what you can also do too, this hand right here is suited for kind of gripping it if you don't want the handle. Like if you don't want him holding the handle, you can simply just have him gripping the pint glass that way as well. Speaking of beverages, this is nice. Also includes cola. No, no, it's not, it's not that cola, even though it's red and it's got the same sort of writing on the front. A refreshing glass, it almost even looks like something you could drink. The ice cubes vary, a nice nice touch on the in the uh, interior there of the cup. It's also a straw, it's just a little plastic straw, but it's actually made of a dense plastic. It's not like hollow. Well, it is hollow, but like this part here isn't hollow. It's just the opening in the top. It's a bit trickier to get into its mouth, being that when you put it into its hand, it holds the cup well. But to get it to its close enough to its mouth, I've actually helped found found it helped to close the mouth slightly so that the mouth would actually assist to hold the cup on an angle. Without that, the cup kind of the straw sort of flings away from the mouth. The mouth kind of in a way aids to hold the cup of soda very securely in place. And again, if you want to go back and all of a sudden we want to bring the glasses once again in. I think my favorite look for the Gremlin is probably going to be like the cup and likely probably the 3D glasses. But you can probably see right off the bat, just from very little of the accessories we've covered so far, how many options there are available and how you probably will find yourself buying more than one of these. You'd like to say that you're not. You'll tell others that you won't, but we know you will. You'll buy at least two or three of these. So we'll put that also to the side. It's got a candy bar. 
or actually it looks like Skittles. It's Brad Bites, bite-sized candies made with failed fruit juice. You see what they did right there? Failed fruit juice. This is not, it's not hollow. It's a plastic, like it's solid plastic. You can put it into his hand. This hand actually is better for the drinks. This hand is better for like the candies. And it just kind of wedges in between its thumb and its two fingers, and you can hold the candy bar in place. Product placement, of course, you're leaving that off if you're gonna have the candy package facing upright. Speaking of candy, also includes, I keep wanting to pick this guy up, also includes the Duda bar. The Duda bar. Milk chocolate with light whipped center. That's what it looks like on the side. Now these, this here is just stickers. Now looking at this one, it doesn't look like, maybe it is a sticker. Yeah, it is a little sticker on the side there. This one's a little bit more apparent that you can see where the sticker has been folded over the edges. But again, it does look like a really, I think it's, a, I'm trying to guess what candy bar that is. Is that a Baby Ruth? I don't, we don't have, I don't think we have Baby Ruth here in Canada. I think the striping would indicate that the Three Musketeers, possibly, or even a Baby Ruth. Anyways, so you can fit that also into his hand, and you can kind of guess which hand it's going to fit on this side rather than this side here. And also, while we're talking about the smaller hand, a small hand, ah, you see what I did there? A small hand of playing cards. One side has been printed. Those look like bicycle cards. And then the other side there, you've got the Seven of Diamonds, the Jack of Clubs, and the Ace of Spades, in which you can also foot fit into the hand of the Gremlin. The cards do sit loose, and uh, you kind of just have to hold them up like this. They rest more against the hands, more against the fingers than they do anything else. And then if you wanted to, oh, I'm going to lose this, take the cigar, the cigarette, put that in his mouth, and you can have the gremlin playing cards, playing poker. Doesn't stop there. Oh, there's more. There is much more, my friends. He also comes included with some bags of popcorn. Empty bags of popcorn. They are empty. There is nothing inside of them yet. It says crisp, hot, and giant hybrid popcorn. Delicious and nutritious. Don't think popcorn is really the most nutritious things that you could be eating. Um, it is hollow though. Let me just show you both sides, both openings. Get my finger in there, get my finger in there, get my finger in there, <laughs> get my finger in there. There we go, all right, almost there. Ah, there we go, all right, there we go. You'll see, that took a lot of time for what little it accomplished. They are hollow on both sides. You could ideally put, I kind of wish that they would have included also a full bag of popcorn, kind of in the same way that the, the soap cup, the soap, the soda cup also has something filled inside. Kind of wish that they also could have included a popcorn bag that had popcorn inside. But you can either put it in its hand empty, or what you can also do too, is take the bags of popcorn. I love this. Take the bags of popcorn and just simply slide of the ears. This is fun. Love it. And again, you could mix and match, put the soda into its hand. You could put like the 3D glasses on it. There really is a lot that you can do with this. Look how much time we've eaten up just simply talking about its accessories. Well, let's spend a little more time talking about the actual figure, which is gorgeous. Some of my favorite things that NECA has released over the many years that I have collected NECA figures have been the, the Gremlins characters. I've collected all of them. That's not true. The only one I haven't collected, still want to eventually pick up, just didn't have a lot of interest in it at the time, was the Electricity Gremlin from Gremlins 2, the new batch. Just the nature of it, simply just being a flat sheet of plastic, didn't excite me as much. But being the completionist that I am, at oftentimes nausea, uh, I will likely want to eventually get that guy. I'm sure I probably could find him at a pretty good price. Don't want to, again, take anything really away from this gremlin. I want to talk more about a, an exquisite head sculpt. Look at the head sculpt, a precursor to what we'll eventually get with Stripe, which I believe Stripe right now is on pre-order. I think Basically, it's making use of the exact same body. The head sculpt does look slightly different. It has a more furrowed 
angrier expression. And while this gremlin does have, you could almost say, a more of a smiling face, I believe the stripe has more of an angrier mouth expression, like even the mouth angles downward. Talking a little bit about the mouth, look at the coloring that they've put in here. Warmer colors of orange, reds, and yellows all mixed in there. Speaking of yellows as well, look at the yellow teeth on the gremlin. You can even see almost the tonsils on the interior of the mouth. Of course, this does open and close. It's got just this level of detail that you almost only expect NECA to be able to produce. Like the scaling on the skin, hopefully the camera is able to pick it up. You can just see how, first of all, the skin, not even realizing it until looking at it now, it almost has like a hexagonal shape to it. And then there's texturing within there as well. Of course, all of this plays second to the yellowing stripe here runs down the striping on the ears, the top of the head, even like the eyebrows get smaller versions of it. Each of the gremlins sort of have like a unique coloring palette to them. I think most of them have similarly shared pattern, but there are some of them that do have different, different patterns to them. Again, you've got some nice yellowing here, slightly lighter in the, in the middle, slightly darker on the edges, and then you've got this additional brown that kind of just outlines all the pattern work done here. As we kind of get further down, it looks almost something more similar to like a cockroach. It's, that's the best way that I could describe it. Kind of looks like the top shelling, the top shell of a cockroach. Maybe I'm the only one that sees that. Doesn't it kind of look like a cockroach? Again, you got the great texturing that they've done to the legs, but then a slight variation to what you would normally get up here at the top here of the gremlin's torso. A little bit of like that cockroach experience that's happening down at the back here. You don't want to even call it like a tail, but it almost reads like an abdomen or very insect-like down here. Scaling is still done. It's almost like shingles of a house where you've got yellow, slightly more darker brown that's been added to it. Very, very different than the experience that we're getting up at the top here. I love this figure so, so very much. You can see the texturing on the interior of the ear. Slightly tip it. Um, camera wants to out unfocus from this. Slightly a little bit darker here of the yellow on the interior of the ear. Gets a little lighter on the edges, almost closer to a white, whitish yellow on the edges there. All the scales on the sides, on the undersides of its jaw. The only thing it doesn't have that Ultimate Gizmo did have, and almost to the credit that I'm glad it doesn't, is it doesn't have rotating eyes. It doesn't have anything that you can get in there. I don't think really any of the Gremlins figures ever had that. Most, if not all of it, was kept to the Mogwai line. I think non-moving eyes perfectly sits fine with me. I don't think I would want moving eyes on it for unfortunately the same problems that I had with Ultimate Gizmo. It just didn't, it didn't seem like the, the trackball eyes worked all that well majority of the time. I would have just preferred the eyes being stacked myself. One thing I did notice though with the, the mouth here is that the mouth seems off-lined, like it doesn't seem centered. The jaw kind of angles, I don't know if you can see it or not, angles this way it doesn't sit flushed center. When you are putting the mouth in, it can't help but give you like an angled mouth more opened on this side than opened here. I guess it's intentional. Never really examined the gremlin mouth all that much to notice whether it does have, you know, a slightly more relaxed jaw, a lazy lip, if you will, on the one side. But that's what I have noticed though with this particular figure, like it does have a little bit more of an open mouth here as it does than it does on this side here. Yeah, indeed, I am very, very happy with this figure, the, the interior, the underside of its feet, two peg holes. Now I did actually cheat at the beginning of this review for the first opening looks of the figure. I just used a little clear display stand. I don't, I wouldn't say I have problems with standing the figure. Um, but it does have the same problems that some of the other Gremlins figures that I've had currently face, like right now. This foot, the hind leg, 
as you can see it angles forward rather than back, is a little on the loose side, this one foot. This foot isn't as bad, but this one foot here is a little loose for me. So I did find when I was displaying the figure, unless I had it dead set on its feet, completely flat, the figure was prone to falling. So I remedied that, I cheated, and I used a stand not included with this figure to kind of cheat and work around for the fact that, certainly at the beginning of this review, I didn't want the figure to topple over while we were examining it, so I just made use of a clear stand. I guess NECA could have also included a clear stand. You may fare better standing the figure than what I had, so yeah, again, I just used the stand for that. Let's run through his posability, and he does have a fair share. Anybody who's collected the Gremlins figures over the years probably will experience and recognize the same articulation points that all the other Gremlins figures had. So like the head rotates all the way around like that. The mouth opens up back and forth. And then there's a secondary ball joint. So there's a ball joint here and a ball joint here, and then the hinge joint of the mouth on top of that. So you got one, you got two, and then you got a joint right here in the in the mouth. The ears also do rotate, not by a lot, but they do rotate slightly forward and back. The shoulders hinge outward. It's kind of limited, unfortunately, by because of the scaling. As you can see, the texturing on the shoulder, because it sticks up as far as it does, it sort of eliminates being able to move the arm past that point. You sort of see the gap right there where the joint is allowing you to bend it, but then when you bend it up, that's as far out as it's gonna go. I can't see why you would want the arms further out from that, but that's that's the limitations, sadly, when it comes to the posability on its arm. The arm moves, on the other hand, quite generously up, quite generously back as well. I guess if you want to put his hand up, if you want to ask a question, you could certainly do that as well. Has a bend at the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate. Not by much, though. The hands rotate all the way around, and there's also a hinge right there that allows the hands to move back and forward. He has an upper torso ball joint, nothing lower waist-wise. The legs are slightly limited as well when it comes to posability. The legs move out this way, as far out as that. You can move the legs forward to only about there. You can move the legs back to only about there. Hind leg hinges right there on the knee, and a secondary hinge on the front. Now again, over the years that I've noticed collecting my older the ones that I've reviewed before, I've noticed that this part of the ankle, this part of the leg, seems to be the one place that begins to get loose on the figure. Uh, again, you can remedy that by, if you just so happen to have, this isn't a NECA stand, but it's clear, if you had any one of these, this is actually a Funko vinyl stand, if you could believe it, but it's the appropriate size, not that I should be advertising a, an opposing company, but it's the right size of peg to fit underneath its feet, and it's somewhat concealed. It doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. That's about the only other thing that's a bit of a problem when it comes to this figure. What I do list, though, for problems, hopefully reads you, as the viewers, will read as, it's not specifically anything wrong with the sculpt of the figure. The sculpt, as well as the paint, is beautiful on this piece. My only problems with this figure are only in the same problems that I had with previous Gremlins figures, primarily basically from like the knees down. That can get a little loose over the years, and you may find the figure has a tougher time standing. Currently, he's about, I want to say 80% better chance of standing than he does falling over. That could worsen over time, being the way that the hinges just just by the way that the hinges are situated, it's not so much the knee joint, it's this hinge joint right here that I feel over the time could become a little loose. In the meantime, I don't certainly want to dismiss a figure for its inability to stand. Like I said, for the most part, it does stand good, but man, oh man, is this one fantastic gremlin figure. Oh, oh, ultimate gremlin figure. Gremlins 1 and Gremlins 2, the new batch, still remains to be one of my favorite toy lines that NECA Toys has ever produced. Somebody yells from the audience, not Nightmare on Elm Street? Close. Not Friday 13th? Closer still. But no, the Gremlins line still remains above and beyond, higher above all the other lines, is my favorite things that NECA has produced over the years. The Spider Gremlin, just on its own, I think is one of the greatest toys. Not the greatest, but certainly one of the greatest. It's top of my top 10 favorite figures of all time, and there's reasonings for that. You can even see, even though this isn't from 
the new batch. This isn't the Spider Gremlin. You can see, hopefully, in this review, the amount of detail, the amount of paint that they put in just this guy alone. It certainly makes Gremlins and NECA toys stand out from the crowd. As you can really see, they're the champions when it comes to high-end detailed figures that are super posable as well. For your money, I think your best money gets spent when it comes to these ultimate figure lines because not only are you getting a super detailed, super posable figures, but you're getting all the accessories one could even want. When I think of Gremlins, I think, okay, I wouldn't mind popcorn ears the 3D glasses, a soda, a beer. And basically NECA included all of that when they released the Ultimate Gremlin here. It certainly entertains the idea, very easily entertains the idea of picking up more than one of these so I can have them displayed in their various different looks. Uh, talking a little bit about the theater room, I think I mentioned a little bit of that in this review as well. It would be pretty neat as well if NECA could release a theater room. Certainly not a large scale theater room, but maybe something, a little diorama that has multiple seats to it, maybe three or four seats that you could have the gremlins displayed with them within that diorama in their various different looks. Just an FYI, just an idea for NECA toys if they are watching this video, which I don't know if they are. Either way though, guys, easily some of the stuff some of the best things that we've been looking at in this on this channel in 2019 NECA has been producing and I know I sing the praises of NECA from time to time but you guys can hopefully see in these reviews why I say that the Michael Myers the ultimate Chucky Bride of Chucky and Tiffany and the ultimate Gremlin by far so far have been my favorite figure releases in 2019 and we've just started the year as well if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, like I said, for your money, I think you, you get your money's worth when it comes to these Ultimate releases. Some good news as well, if you guys are interested in picking up the Ultimate Gremlin, it's available now in comic book stores. Price point, and of course that will vary from place to place, but here in Canada, an Ultimate figure, the Ultimate Gremlin, for example, was $34.99. $34.99 is not bad at all when you think of all the amount of stuff that you get with this figure, entertaining again, picking up a second one and a third one. Okay, we may be picking up four of these. Either way though, today we were having a look at the new NECA release. This was the original Gremlins, and this was Ultimate Gremlin. Sort of a precursor once again to the ultimate, uh, uh, ultimate spike that we will be getting very, very soon. I think he's actually on pre-order right now. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other NECA reviews, fear not, don't worry. Uh, there is also a playlist that you viewers of the interweb can check out and watch at your viewing pleasure. All the stuff that I've done in the field of NECA, whether it be Gremlins, Friday the 13th, or Nightmare on Elm Street, to name a few, will be all found in the playlist section. So feel free to check that out. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos, not maybe Gremlin related, but more videos will be coming your way. And let me know down below, guys. Would you like to see me go back and revisit some of my earlier Gremlins reviews? I'm getting that itch. I'm going to get looked at. Don't worry. I'm going to go get looked at. Either way, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.